Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey, y'all. I am on I-85 heading south, coming back from the loveliest village on the plains back to Montgomery. And, and part of the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because I just got back from Auburn judging a parliamentary procedure contest. One of the things that it teaches young people is the art of debate. And because I was judging that and because I was thoroughly impressed with a lot of the kids that I saw today, it really made me appreciate it, made me think about what an integral part of being able to debate a topic is to a person's education. And it's the really intelligent young people that are able to engage in this contest. It's a very difficult contest. You don't even know what the subject is going to be until one minute before the contest starts. And so you have about 60 seconds to, in your mind, come up with four debates, whether this topic is a good idea or a bad idea, and you have to be able to think on your feet and you have to be able to debate back and forth with your teammates. It's an incredibly difficult contest, even though, as a general rule, there aren't a lot of people that go through this contest that continue to use the rules of parliamentary procedure later in life. And I'm sure some do with their local churches or small organizations like that that actually use Robert's Rules of Order. Really what the contest teaches is the art of debate. You have to be able to think on your feet. You have to be able to very quickly come up with compelling arguments and to form your ideas and your thoughts about a topic into a coherent piece of thought and convey that to other people in such a way that it convinces them to side with you. And I was thinking about this, and this is a contest that you can't participate in until you get to at least the ninth grade. And it really made me sit down and think about how criminal it is that we don't teach our students debate much earlier. But there was a time where a staple of Western thought, that if you were an educated person in the West, you were started on debate at a very early age. In fact, it was not at all uncommon for somebody to be well-versed in the art of rhetoric, well-versed in the art of persuasive speech from a very early age. It was one of the very first things that they taught. In ancient Greece, for example, going all the way back to the birth of Western civilization, they started you on that when you were about five. They started you on geometry of all things and rhetoric. And the reason for that, the rationale for that, was that it was important because it taught you how to think critically. In other words, if you were involved in rhetoric and you had to learn how to put your thoughts together that quickly and you had to challenge ideas and sometimes even take the opposite side of the position that you actually held on an issue, it taught you those really critical thinking skills. And because of that, the rest of your education was easier because nothing teaches you a subject like having to defend it against attack or the opposite, having to attack it and finding the places where the thinking is flawed or where the ideology needs some improvement. And so because of this, this was a staple of Western civilization really up until about 100 years ago. And it's part of the reason that the education system worked so well for so long. For the longest time, our students had to not only learn material, but had to stand up and defend it or stand up and be critical of it. And that really helped them understand and absorb the material. And furthermore, because they started out with that first and developed their critical thinking skills, the rest of their education was more robust because they had those critical thinking skills and those problem solving skills to begin with. So it made a real difference in our education system, and it's something that I believe is sorely lacking, something that we need to bring back. And another bit of social commentary on this is that when it comes to the, the stereotypical characteristics of some people in my generation and the generation after it, Generation Z, what do you typically think about? They have a hard time taking criticism. They don't like hearing ideas that are not shared by them. There are things that they say is actually violence or harmful to their health to hear ideas that they disagree with. 
Well, the reason that that wasn't the case for the longest part of Western civilization is because we took on the idea that you ought to have to defend your own ideas, that ideas ought to be observed critically, and that you should have to go through and test whether or not something was true or not. That's really not the way education works now. They give you facts that they say are true and then expect you to just sort of regurgitate them on the test. That's not an education. That's memorization. And there's nothing wrong with memorization. Memorization is great. I'm an advocate of it. But it's not the same as having to defend your ideas 